Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Markowitz, and in this particular video, I want to show you guys uh, some some concepts behind painting textures to make them look like they are ancient looking or really really old. Now, this is clearly not an all inclusive list. We're not going to you know have every possible thing ever, but I do want to show you a couple of methods, uh, give you some examples, right, and give you something to work with uh, for the future. Now. Let's take a look first at this image right here. This is actually an image done by a past student of mine, uh, Tyler his name was, um, and I'm going to show you first and foremost kind of the process that he went through so you guys can kind of get an idea of, of what you can do. Now I'm going to hide these couple of uh, other things over here. We're going to start off with just the base layer. I want to show you guys that the original image that he used was this. So this is actually the only part of the image that is uh, a photograph that he used. The rest of the image is all done up painting and using a couple of methods uh, that I'm about to get into. Now this original image looks bright and it also looks real smooth and kind of blurry and that really doesn't work so well when we're going to try to create something making it look like it's really old or ancient. We want a lot more detail, a lot more grain, a lot more like kind of broken up feel. So the cool thing is he actually went and he created a noise layer. You can easily do that using the filters uh, in Photoshop. But he just kind of created a noise layer of using some grays and blacks, right? That's all you can see here. And what he did was using a layer blend, in this particular case, overlay. If you actually overlay over this, look at the difference that we're getting with the stone. So if I turn the layer on and off, you'll see quite a clear difference as far as the end result. So I do encourage you always, one of the major things to do whenever you're painting textures, play around with your blend modes, right? So your layer blends, because there's all sorts of cool things. Now, this is not to say that if I was to look at different ones that there might be a better one than that. Um, overlay tends to be the best one, but you can go in and just try them all. Uh, we're just gonna leave it like that. So that's how he got his base layer. So then he just made a copy of the base layer as we see there uh, without the two things actually um, uh, having to blend in real time. Now then, he, then after that, of course, he added the detail. I'm going to break the detail down. So let me just turn on that group and we'll shut off each of these areas. So we'll start off with uh, the crack. So the first thing is the main crack. So you'll see right here, if I actually turn that layer on, this is what his main cracks look like. If you want to see how that's done, pretty simple actually. It's a lot more simple than it looks. Um, all you have to do is if I was to say make a brand new layer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a brand new layer here. And of course we want to make sure it's over our base layer. Otherwise we can't see what we're working with. I'm going to have black selected. Now you can always use a different color, but remember changing the opacity, changing the layer blend can actually change its color. So I tend to find that black works fine because I can control how dark it is. So we're just going to grab a, um, a brush here. So I'm just going to grab a brush and we're going to make sure that we have in this case, I'm just going to grab kind of a soft edge brush, and we're going to make it really small. Okay, so we're going to get real small there, maybe about this. Let's see, that looks about good, right? Something around the same same uh, size, maybe even one a little bit smaller. So it's about a 7 up here. It really is dependent on the resolution of your texture, so that number might not always work. Now what I'm going to do is actually going to hide the main cracks for a moment, so you can see what I'm talking about here. Now theoretically, when you're drawing lines in Photoshop, you can click and then hold shift and click somewhere else and it'll give you a perfect line. But if we're trying to make it look ancient, that's not going to make a lot of sense. At this point, they didn't have the right tools to make it that clean. Of course, over time, things might erode. So my suggestion is when you're trying to draw lines, especially when you're trying to do like brick lines or things like that, just kind of move your hand across the screen. Don't go slow and then do something like this. Of course, that looks silly. Just kind of go a nice quick movement like this. Just a little bit of a bend. That's probably too much. Let me try it again. That might work, but let's just be a little bit more subtle. I'm getting <laughs> kind of on these all these angles here. There we go. That might be good. Um, but you can play off of something like that. Um, but from here, you can easily start creating the effect that you want, the bevel that you want. All right. And it's simple as just by double clicking here, adding uh, bevel and emboss. So we'll come up here and click on bevel and emboss. Now by default, it does a, um, uh, it's going to do a inner bevel. And of course, we don't want that. That's going to just make the bevel inside the dark line. We're actually going to switch it to an outer bevel. So we're going to click on bevel and emboss itself to get its settings. We're going to change it from an inner bevel to an outer bevel. Right, and then we can change the size of it. Now, in this case, also, we want it to look like it's going in, not kind of out. So this looks like it's popping out. It looks a little silly. So we're going to get down. And clearly, the only difference, honestly, is the highlights. So it, it kind of tricks our eyes. When highlights are on the top and shadows are on the bottom, it looks like it's going out. When the shadows are on the top and the highlights are on the bottom, it looks like it's going down. It's just something we're used to. And of course, you can go up here and change the angle of the sunlight, uh, things like that. So it changes it. You can play with how bright the highlights are, right? So if we use the opacity here, we can change the brightness of the highlights, change the, uh, the darkness, I should say, uh, of the 
these shadows and so on and kind of get the effect we want and we, of course we can also choose other things like chisel hard or soft chisel or whatever that seems to work best in this case we're just going to do smooth now it also looks like i painted that little dot over there before so just kind of ignore that we can always erase that after the fact so once you get something you like that's cool you can hit okay and then from here anytime you draw a line so if i just draw Right from here, and I say I'm going to draw a brick. I can just draw from here, and it's going to automatically update that line for me. Now that is just a little too wonky. I'm having a hard time with my mouse and my arm position here to get the line that I want. Right, we're going a little crazy with that. Right, oh man, this is going all over the place. But you get the idea, right? Something like that. You can start drawing in your bricks and so on. I'm not actually taking the time to make this look good, but of course, the great thing about this is it's a separate layer. It's real time, the bevel and emboss. So at any given point, if I really don't like something, anyways, of course you can always hit undo. But we can come up here with the eraser tool and just erase out any sections we don't want. And shrink it down, or make sure that it's a hard brush so that we're not getting um, that little blurry kind of effect. So we can kind of come down and shrink the brush down and kind of paint that out and so on, right? So it looks a little bit cleaner. Same thing over here and so on. Now, that's not me trying to make this look good. In fact, this actually looks pretty pathetic. But the point really is, like, this is pretty much what that student did. And then if you want to make those darker cracks in the middle, you can always grab your brush again and just kind of paint more of those cracks out. And this is kind of what he did here so that he had like a... A more of a broken seam there and you can get your brush real thin and get as much you know style out of it as you want or maybe break this one up a little bit too so it kind of comes in there like that and so on you can kind of play with that if it's too dark all right so remember pitch black is going to make it look really deep really dark we can always come in here and drop the fill not the opacity if we drop the opacity it'll actually drop everything including the bevel we just draw want to drop the fill so it's only dropping the color of the line Right, and so if we just drop it a little bit, we can make it look a little bit more gray. Maybe it doesn't go so deep, and so on. It's up to you, right? So while that clearly, and I'm sorry, it doesn't actually look good, uh, just as my position of my mouse or whatever. I, I'm not actually using a Wacom, can't draw my line uh, very well. But if I just hide that, you get the idea. And this is exactly what the student is doing uh, for this, as you can see here, right? And that's really what he did. Then he did what he what he called small cracks. That's just going in with a really tiny brush and just drawing some lines in. Uh, keep in mind that you see how he's got varied lines where some are thick and they get thinner. That's real easy to do. Uh, I find that students tend to have an issue thinking that they have to draw the line like that in the first place, maybe using some sort of special settings. But the trick is, really, you just draw a line in your race. I mean, so if I wanted to create something similar to that effect, I come in here with my line, I can draw some silly line like this. If I go in and grab my eraser tool and make sure that my brush is small enough, I can come in here and just kind of control the thickness of the line. So I can get thin and thicker at different areas, and this can kind of create a more natural line right and that's really kind of what he did here okay and if it's actually you find yourself having a really hard time getting down to almost the pixel for pixel basis to get that effect just make it just like i did here a little bit larger and then just hit Control t and shrink down your uh your thing and then of course or your uh, detail and you'll see that you now get that same kind of line effect that he's doing there all right so that kind of creates those small little cracks or whatever so that's just kind of a method so remember you can always draw lines and erase them later Okay, from there he added text, so this is supposed to be a Transformers thing, I guess he found an actual Transformers font, put it in there, put some bevel and emboss on it, just kind of like what we did with the other one, great, and there you go. Then he has a section called damage, now this is to kind of add like more breakage to the stone, like maybe parts of the stone have been busted in, or parts have eroded, and so on. This is actually really, really simple. Also, it looks like it's complex. If I actually open up the layers, you'll see that he paints his highlights on one layer and he puts his shadows on the other layer. And that's really all you need to worry about, right? And it works pretty simple. I mean, in fact, I can even just paint on his existing layers. And just so you guys know, uh, in this case, he has with highlights screen because that makes things brighter. A lot of times with shadows, we want to do multiply, but he's just leaving on normal, which is fine too. And then you can just control the opacity. So I actually just paint in black or pure white, and then I drop the opacity or change the layer blend so that I can fully control. If I paint with a, you know, like a different color, it doesn't work so well. So let's just say I want to add some highlights, right? We can even do a new layer for highlights here, but you just go in with the brush and make sure it's white, and you kind of make your brush the size that you need. And then you can come in and maybe if I want to make these highlights a little bit more pronounced, I can come in here like that. Same thing, remember, you can always go back in and, and erase them a little bit. But yes, obviously being this white, it looks a little silly, as I said before. But what you can do is you can drop the opacity way down, and you see right there, now you can get a better 
um, highlight, right? You can have a little bit more control over it. And then if you just leave it at 26%, I can still paint in white, but now I get those highlights closer to what I want them to be. So you can come in and paint any kind of set of highlights that you want. Of course, always come back in and grab the eraser tool and paint out where you don't want them, right? So if I don't want them up here, I don't have to have them up there and so on and so forth, right? So you can go in and do that. Now, you can also, and kind of what he's doing here to make them a little bit more painterly, right? It's not that he has a special brush. You can simply just come and either blur them or smudge them. Be careful, of course, when using smudge, though, because you kind of really go crazy with it. But you can just make your brush a little bit bigger, and you can start smudging these effects, right? So I can make them look a little bit more painterly. You see it's a little subtle if I actually increase the opacity, right, just in the meantime so you can see what's going on here, right? You can make them just kind of go whatever direction you want, and you get that more painterly look with them, right, which is kind of really what he's doing here. Right, and do whatever the heck you want with them. Of course, once again, I'm not really trying to make them look good for this video for time's sake, but I am just showing you the process of how it works, right? And so you could drop the opacity and then delete out any parts. So clearly when it goes over the rock, you don't want to see it, or the, the, the chasm in the rock, you don't want to see the highlights, but you get the idea. And the same can be said with, with the, the dark parts, same thing. Just use black, smudge them, and you kind of create the same effect. Uh, drop the opacity and whatever. So that's really all he was doing for those so that's how you can create those multiple effects so hopefully so far you're getting a little bit of um, a little bit of help in understanding how you can create some of these uh, looks now the last thing that he did was he added moss and uh, for here he's got his moss layer but he's also got some water uh, stain damage keep in mind that the moss is going to be kind of green and healthy it's got to have a little bit of a, a source of water if you actually take the water stain out it doesn't look like it looks like it's a little too floaty I mean keep in mind of course if you have that nice lush looking greens you're going to also have a little bit of water or shadow underneath and so that's kind of what he did he just kind of created a shadow layer and painted this on here now there's a couple ways of adding the moss i'm going to show you really kind of a cool method that you can do here and so i actually have some other images i'm going to open them up i'm going to go file open here and on my desktop i've got some uh, some work files here so we're going to start off with some vegetation some images here i'm actually going to take this image right here i'm going to open it up and this is a moss uh, layer. Uh, you can even see where it came from. Uh, obviously, clearly, if you're going to use something uh, from a site, know their terms of use and definitely don't leave their watermark in your texture. Uh, then you look like a total noob. So make sure that doesn't happen. But anyways, I'm going to hit Control A, Control C to copy here. Um, and then I'm going to bring this image into the scene. Make sure, of course, that this logo is out of the picture by moving it up. Okay, so there you go. So now, obviously, this isn't going to work by itself. I can't just, like, put the moss on top. But I'm going to use what is known as a mask, and I'm going to paint in what I want. So if I come in and grab the mask over here, set the mask to be black. So instead of white, I'm going to make it black by grabbing my paint bucket and completely painting it out. Now I can basically paint in my moss wherever I want it. So I switch the color back to white and choose a brush that works. So in this case, we're going to use a brush, something like this one, actually, I find doesn't, doesn't, doesn't uh, work too bad. And we'll kind of come in here, and I can just start painting in. So I can just start clicking anywhere I want and actually add some moss. Right? If I can hold it, it might not look as natural as you see there. I don't like those hard edges. I want the edges to be a little bit more rough. So that's why I'm clicking instead of holding it. Of course, you can choose different brushes, try different effects. But you kind of see how that works, and now we can paint moss wherever we want. Now, because this brush isn't very random, uh, it is giving a weird kind of consistent look that I don't want. Maybe we'll try something more like this. It's a little bit harder to recognize the pattern in. And we can do the same thing. Come in there and paint the moss wherever we want. And really, like I said, all it's doing is behind the scenes. It's just, and some spots don't look good like this. If it doesn't look good, just switch the color, paint it back out, and try again somewhere else. Right? And so on. Right? But just choose your right brush. You can see that it's starting to look pretty decent. Right? Um, not that hard of an effect to accomplish and pretty simple. But yes, it does look like it's a little floaty. So if we want to uh, come in here, double click on the blank area of the layer to bring up our layer styles dialog, we can do things like bevel and emboss and drop and shadow or drop shadow. And we'll click on bevel and emboss. And yeah, the default is going to be a little silly. It remembers that last thing that we did. But we don't want that. What we're actually going to do instead is we're going to do an up. So it makes it look like it's actually three dimensional and we're just going to really drop down the screen i don't want a super bright screen that's really what's making it look kind of almost like it's covered in reynolds wrap or some weird nonsense um shadows same thing we just kind of play with them make them soft you can play with this until it looks to kind of what you want right so we'll just add a little bit of depth to it um now we want to be careful because you see it's actually adding depth on the edge if we're doing a tiling texture you see if i shut this off 
it's doing that. If you're creating a tiling texture, you've got to be wary of that. So you add the effect, and then you can flatten the layer down, scale the whole thing up a little bit, and then you can get rid of that edge or just you know flatten the whole layer down and delete that part of it. But always be mindful of things like that. Anyways, you can see right here if I turn my bevel on and off how much like dimension it actually adds to the object. Makes it a little bit more 3D. And then we'll add a drop shadow to just further that. We'll make this one a little bit more diffuse though. So uh, we'll increase the distance a bit. We'll increase the size a bit. right? And then maybe we'll increase the opacity. So it's a little bit darker underneath. Something to that effect. And then we can turn on and off and see how that looks too. right? So that kind of adds a little bit to it also so it's up to you there's no right answer of how you want to do it this might be a little two-dimensional maybe popping too much maybe i drop down the uh, the bevel just a little bit more but once again you get the idea this is just you guys getting a quick glance and understanding of how you can create some of these effects right and we could theoretically too also just drop the opacity down on all of this too just a little bit not too much uh, if you do it too much you have like a ghostly looking plant that really wouldn't make a lot of sense so we could just a little bit so we can kind of tone it down a bit right and there you go looks just a hair better at a little bit less but as i said before irrelevant you get the idea just trying to teach you a couple of different effects okay so there you go so that's pretty much how that one student created what you saw before so i'm going to shut that off and i have a couple other demos i want to show you guys real quick to kind of end it off the first one's the engraving demo now in the engraving demo i found this image on the internet uh, royalty free you you either can make your own or find a royalty free image but basically what I did was I took that image we'll see right here and I turned it into this okay and uh, it's actually pretty simple to do this um, it, pretty much all the methods I already showed you is how you do it and in this particular case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the original we're gonna recreate what I did down there or just a part of it anyways and we're gonna create we're gonna grab the original we're gonna delete out the white part of the image so I'm actually going to grab over here on the side instead of the quick select I'll grab the magic wand I'll make sure that I am not in contiguous so I grab all the white in the scene click on this and because it's black and white really simple it's only gonna grab the white it's great and I'll just hit delete uh, and then control D to deselect now you could theoretically do a layer blend to make it look like you don't see this. If you did a multiply, the white would disappear. But then you can't do the bevel effect because it would only bevel the outside edges. So we really do need to delete all those white pixels. So that's kind of how I did that. And then all we have to do, of course, is bevel and emboss. And uh, so you can tell that when it comes to ancient, bevel and emboss tends to be our friend here. Um, so we can come in here and we can do, uh, instead of an up, we'll go down. So it looks like it's getting carved in. Okay, and then we're going to decrease the size a little bit just for the moment here. Um, and what I'm going to do too is I'm actually just going to keep these settings for now. We can always change them later. But I'm going to go over here and I'll show you the, how you make this really look like a, an engraving. Is, is using fill. So we talked about it earlier where if you drop opacity, it drops everything including the bevel. If you drop fill, it only drops the layer and not the actual bevel. So if we go all the way down, you can get a really kind of engraved look in the stone. Right, and if you leave a little bit of it in there, then it can kind of look just a little bit deeper and pop the whole thing a little bit more. But that looks pretty cool, right? Where you just get that kind of uh, that bevel going in there. Now I can once again go in there and go crazy with the bevel and get it to where I want to get the idea. But the other great cool thing about this is I can always come back with a brush, and we can take any brush, including say just the brush we used for the last one, and paint in some more detail. And this. By the way, and I'm painting in white, so that's why we're getting this this difference. So I'm actually going to undo that and switch that to black. <clears throat> Paint in black so we get that same level of depth. <clears throat> and then maybe I'll make this a little bit smaller and so on. So we can come in here and just start making those cracks. So that's kind of what I was doing before. And uh, to create that effect, because it's real time, it's a layer effect, you can do that. Now, if I want to kind of make it go out and make this really thin line, remember that erase technique I taught you guys before. Just grab the eraser. We can come in here and just erase until it's just a couple of pixels. And you get this very, whoops, a little too much, but you get this very thin line. We can kind of play off of that and do whatever we want and make it more realistic. You play with it enough. Of course, you can get it to look like this. And that's kind of what I did here uh, with this one, spending more time using a couple of the different methods I was showing before. All right, so that's the engraving method um, as far as creating some ancient stuff. And the very last one I wanted to show is this. Uh, I just found this image on the Internet, um, but uh, just, just to kind of give you more of a reference, there's actually a couple of other tools that you might not have even known existed in Photoshop, and, and, um, and you probably saw them over and over again, but just didn't know what they did. This is how you use them. So here's the original. This is kind of what we can do with it, as you can see here. 
<clears throat> but we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, some other cool things that you probably don't know about and that will help with creating this kind of image. Now, the good thing about this image is that the background is very light. I don't have to manually cut it out. It's not a solid color, so it'll take a long time to cut it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll show you those new tools that I've been already speaking about for a while by double clicking in the empty space and bring up our layer style. And instead of actually using any of these layer styles, we're just gonna look at the default, the blending options, whatever pops up here. And you've probably never played with this, but down here where it says blend if, this section is what's pretty fun here. Now, there's two different parts to it. There's this layer and underlying layer. So this layer being the top layer, this image, and the underlying layer being the stone below it. Now, what you can do is if you move these sliders, so there's sliders in the darks and the lights. So if I move the light sliders down, as you can see here from this layer or the top layer, what it, do, what it does is it takes the highest, brightest colors and starts going down the spectrum and making them disappear. So that's one really quick way to make the background kind of disappear. Right, so we can start from there. Then what you can do, now you could go the other direction, and you see how the darks go out too, but then it's a little too consistent. We don't necessarily just want the darks to, to disappear. So what we could do is have it disappear the dark colors from the bottom layer and, and the light colors from the bottom layer. And you notice as if I drag this, we can start creating this effect. If I go this way, right there, and I have to go pretty high up because there really isn't any blacks in the background layer. So we do have to go pretty high up before we start seeing some distortion. But look at that, it just kind of creates this very natural you know, effect where it's just bringing in the darker colors um, uh, from underneath or whatever. And what you can also do is go the other way and do the light colors instead, and you get the same kind of effect. Uh, the cool thing too is, you can even split these by holding down Alt. You can split these, and they do create these other effects, too. And you can sit there and play with them all day and get this effect of, like, there was something that was like a painting that was on the wall that's been kind of, uh, you know, ruined over time. Uh, lastly, of course, if you have a really bright image and, say, your colors are very saturated, uh, clearly when it comes to um, colors in, and things that have been on a wall for a long time, you're not going to see that level of saturate, saturation. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to go up here to our adjustments and we can use an adjustment layer um, but I want to affect uh, just this one particular layer here and we'll pick adjustments and we can do hue and saturation and um, you can just dro drop the saturation a little bit, right? You don't want to be too much. It just depends. This one because it kind of makes those gray, it looks a little silly. So you just want to drop it maybe a hair and a little bit Maybe we could play around with the lightness and, and darkness, all sorts of other things. Maybe a little bit of a hue, color change, color shift. Maybe adding some uh, yellows or other colors like that over time. But you just play around a little bit. Get those colors to be a little bit more muted. You clearly don't want to just make them obvious. Now, you could always do colorize too, which is kind of cool. And then we can choose a color that looks more, uh, you know, you can see it goes over the, the spectrum. So there can be greens and blues and things like that. Some of these colors don't work very well, but anything in the yellow spectrum works. So something like this actually works pretty well. Um, and then you can drop that down. And you can see I'm playing around with the saturation there. And that actually looks pretty good too. So now we're not even dealing with colors. It makes more sense. And we can hit OK there. You can always do layer blends on top of the fact, right? So I can go in here and do layer blends. Some of these don't look good. Some of them might. That kind of has an interesting look. Um, like I said, not all layer blends work every time, but it's just cool to kind of go down the gambit and see what they do and see what kind of effects they have. Most of these don't seem to work very well, um, but like I said, it's worth exploring and just seeing how it affects your scene. And then finally, you can always drop the opacity down a little bit too and make it even more faint. So it's up to you. I've just given you a whole bunch of tools right there in order to kind of paint ancient textures. Hopefully this kind of helps you guys uh, give you a little bit of understanding of where you can go and how you can create certain levels of detail. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.